How to make an automatic mob farm in Minecraft 1.19 and up. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to make this cool semi-automatic mob farm behind me. But before we start this project, here's your material list. For one layer, you're going to need 22 uh, stacks of either cobblestone or cobblestone deep slate. You can use other blocks, but cobblestone or deep slate works a little bit better. About nine hoppers, two chests, and for each layer you do, you'll need a stack of trap doors and a couple of water buckets it's just to get yourself started so you're going to grab as many materials that you can fit inside your inventory and then get ready to start this project as you can see here i'm kind of building it over the ocean because there's going to be no less caves underneath and i won't have to go around lighting caves up so it'll be a little more efficient if you build it in the middle of an ocean plus it's kind of an eyesore so sticking it out of the way and away from the rest of your builds is also a good idea you're going to build a three by three platform place a chest on one side, and then place nine hoppers in a three by three platform all leading into this chest. So we have three hoppers there. This makes six hoppers, making sure all the hoppers are pointing towards each other and that they're all facing towards the chest. And then another three hoppers here. So you should have three by three hoppers facing into a double chest. Place a slab on top of each one of these hoppers here. And once you have a slab placed, you have completely finished your collection system. This is how you're going to collect all your loot and your rewards automatically. And uh, the slabs just keep it uh, the mobs from being able to detect you and being able to hit you. After that, place one block up, one block over. We're going to get rid of this block here. So you're going to mine this block. And then I'm going to use this water bucket for one second to get on top of this block. And then you're going to build a 3x3 three three ring on all sides, making it a 5x5, five five, I believe. Um, so they're going to put a temporary block there. So three blocks on this side, place a temporary block. Three blocks on this side, place a temporary block. And then three blocks on this side. And then we can go back and get rid of these temporary blocks here. So the reason we're doing this is to save one block each for the corners. Um, and we're just kind of framing out that three by three platform that we did for the collection system. And this is how we're kind of funnel all the mobs into one spot. Once you've done that, you're going to want to build up blocks on all the sides like this. So we're going to build two more blocks up all the way around. As you can see here, we're kind of making a, a tube or a funnel, whatever you want to call it for to collect the mobs. And now from this, you're going to go 20 blocks up. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Build it 20 blocks up all the way around. If you start from the first block, it's going to be 22 blocks up all the way around. And you should have something that looks like this. We can see my little base over there. Uh, but now that you have something that looks like this, you should be able to see towards the bottom. Build 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 blocks out from the center of one side. And then extend it on all sides like this. So you should have 7 blocks out on all three one two three four five six seven and we're going to go over here and do the same thing go to the middle block one two three four five six seven and then we're going to extend it to both sides so we're going to do on this side seven blocks and on this side seven blocks as well making a cross or a plus uh, kind of formation here. And again, we're gonna go to this side and build out seven blocks. You're going to repeat this process for all four sides, extending it out on all three, uh, seven blocks out, kind of making this formation here. These are going to be the collection chambers or the uh, kind of how to funnel the mobs into that one particular tube, if that makes sense. Um, so again, seven blocks on this side, all four sides, all three pillars there. So here we go, extending this one out to seven and then boom. So now that we have something that looks like this, you will uh, want to take a temporary block, place it there and there, there. We can get rid of this one. I didn't mean to place that one. Temporary block here and then one next to it temporary block here and one next to it and once you have that you can get rid of these temporary blocks so we're gonna get rid of this block this block uh this block and the one over here this block right here so you should have uh kind of four blocks placed that we're going to use to kind of loop around this um, but it shouldn't block the chambers we just made so then we're going to take this and you're going to kind of go around the pathway we just made here so i'm going to go and extend this uh eight blocks out 
to the edge here. And again, we're doing this method to try and save on some corner blocks. If you want to skip this and just loop all the way around and kind of follow the path one block up, you'll definitely save some time, but it'll cost you uh, a couple more stacks of cobblestone to get to this. So we are trying to make this uh, as efficiently and as resource you know effective as possible. So again, just cutting out those corners a couple blocks at a time definitely does help. Uh, so now, as you can see here, we're going to do this on all four sides kind of just framing out what we just built there. And then once we have this, let me finish this last one here real quick. Once we have this, we can uh, start to cap these. And what I mean by cap these is going to any one of these sides. Uh, you're gonna have to do this for all of these. Place a temporary block, a block behind it, and then a block on either side to kind of cap this. And then mine out that uh, temporary block we placed in the front here. So you should have something that looks like this. And then do this for all four sides. So again, temporary block, a block behind it, and two blocks next to that block. And then mining out the temporary block. We have two more sides to do. Block, tempor well, temporary block, block behind it, two blocks next to it, mining out the temporary block. So it's a pretty simple concept. And then finally, we just have to do this on one more side here. So a temporary block, 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 block. No, <laughs> you get it. So now that we've removed that, we can simply take our water buckets. You're going to need two water buckets and place them uh, like so. And it should stop just before the end of the, the uh, trap here. You don't want it to overflow because then the water will travel to the bottom. You know you did this right if it stops just at the end with no gap and no spacing in between. And by using those two water buckets, we can uh, create an infinite water source in the middle and just not even have to go back down to refill our buckets, just using the water that we have up here already. So I'm gonna just make an infinite water source, grab some more water, and make sure all four sides have water, and it should all be facing towards the middle like so, with no gaps, and this is how we are going to funnel our mobs into one particular space. Now that we have that, grab your building blocks again, build two blocks high on the perimeter we just made, and go all the way around placing two blocks high on everything that you just placed. So we're going to kind of follow this plus or cross, whatever you want to call it. And you're going to build two more blocks higher than what we already built. So if you want to skip some effort and some time, you can just start off doing three blocks high. I recommend placing the water first so you're not getting trapped and you're not fighting the water trying to get back up. It's a little easier the way I'm showing you how to do it. But hey, whatever works for you works for you, you know. Uh, so again, here we are, placing our blocks, three blocks high, two blocks high, uh, depending on which method you're going with, two blocks high, all the way around, following this perimeter. It's a pretty simple concept once you get the hang of it. And this is a super efficient way to kind of keep the mobs from being able to jump out after we've captured them. I've seen a lot of people try and do it to like just two blocks tall and it just doesn't work out because sometimes those spiders are able to crawl back up and you're losing that efficiency. But regardless, once you have this, it's just a matter of going here and you're going to build uh, seven blocks out from this side and you're going to connect them. And if this doesn't make sense, we want to connect them up uh, so almost like you're uh, completing the square. As you can see here, we're skipping that corner again. You don't have to. It's just me. Uh, so again, now we've connected them up. You show something that looks like this. We're going to do the same thing on this side. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. And we're going to skip the corner. So we'll go one block over like this. One, two, three, four, five six, seven on this side, because we already placed one block on that side. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Skipping the corner block. This is where the corner would be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, we're just kind of framing this out. You should have a giant uh, square at the end of this if you did it correctly. Uh, and all we're doing here is just building a spawning platform for our mobs to spawn. This is going to be your first platform. If you want to add more platforms later, like I'm going to, you're more than welcome to. 
But once you have this, you're going to go ahead and fill in all these four gaps that we have right here where the space is. Fill these in with solid blocks, not slabs, solid blocks. So we're going to go ahead and fill all these in with our cobble deep slate. So that way we can build a spawning platform for all of our mobs to spawn. There's a way to do this to avoid spiders, but I personally like the spider drops. And once you've filled this all in, you have a nice flat surface on each corner. You're going to take any kind of trap door and place them along the side like so, and then flick them in the down position like so. So we're gonna flick these all in the down position. Go to this side, place them all like this, flick them in the down position. The reason we do this is because a trapdoor that is facing downwards does not count as a uh, down block. Mobs see it as the ability to walk across it, but since it's in the down position, they will fall into the water and the resources will get collected right away. Pretty simple concept, to be honest. And now that we've done this, we can simply close all of these, add more here. Again, each corner should have trapdoors like this all facing in the down position. You're gonna simply follow the cross-like formation we did earlier. And as long as you're matching that formation and each block has a trap door, you'll definitely have spaces for the mobs, not only to spawn, but to walk off and get collected into the chamber here. The most important thing is just to make sure all these trap doors are placed like this and then facing in the down position, you will have to right click all of them in order for this to work. But now that we've done this, you can simply take your full blocks or your building blocks and build one, two, three blocks tall, and then go and follow the perimeter making a giant square. So again, we're three blocks tall, three full building blocks, and we're just gonna go around the entire perimeter of this build, filling it in with three blocks tall, just to get uh, the, the height because you can either add more layers to this if you want to. You can add up to four to five layers. You can build this underground. You can build it starting at the ground. The reason we're building it so far up is now that we now that it's so high up, you do not have to make a AFK spot. You do not have to uh, make a different killing method. Once they fall, it's a lot easier. So we're gonna do two layers for this one, but if you wanna do it this way, you can just build three blocks tall and then add a roof and then that'll be the finished project. But I'll show you how to add some layers as well. And if you want to skip towards the end where I will show you how to add a roof or a final touch on this thing, I will show you that as well. Do not worry. But as you can see here, all I'm doing, three blocks tall, all the way around the perimeter of this entire build. I know this is kind of a tedious. It can be annoying. If you want to skip through this, it's totally fine. I just show you because I had some people give me questions about it, and I just want to make sure I address all of your questions uh, in this video. So here we are, three blocks tall, all the way around. So there we go. So now that we've completed this three blocks tall all the way around, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build another layer on top of this, following exactly what I did on the layer below. Every layer should look like this. So as you can see, I added uh, another four spawning platforms and then went around again and added another three layers. Once you're ready to add the roof, it's pretty simple. Just take your slabs or any full blocks. Slabs is definitely a more efficient way to do this, but the project is calculated for full building blocks as well. So if you use full building blocks, that's fine. Using full building blocks is also easier if you want to add more layers uh, in the future. Like if you get some more building blocks and go, hey, I want to add another layer, that's totally fine. If you don't want to add another layer, all you have to do is take some slabs, some cobblestone slabs, and just completely cover the roof of this thing. Uh, I also prefer slabs because it prevents mobs or other things from spawning on top of the farm rather than in the farm because that is a huge thing. Um, if you do use solid blocks for the top, I recommend that you throw a bunch of torches up there to reduce spawn rates. That way you don't have anything, you know, potentially taking up the space of a mob up there that you would want to get collected into the farm. But like I said, it's a pretty simple concept. All you're going to want to do is go all the way around and fill this entirely in with slabs, making almost a cap or some sort of uh, whatever you want to call it. As long as there's no light being able to shine into this farm, you'll be all right. Uh, make sure we don't have any sticking up like this. If there's any gaps, it'll reduce the rate of the farm. But so now we're going to go ahead and fill all of this in real quick. So once we have that all filled in, you have this entire thing covered off. We can head back down towards the bottom of the farm. 
And if we go here, you can see we have a completed farm. This is this is it. Once you're ready to collect your mobs, your loot, you can head over there and just start punching them. But I recommend throwing some torches down towards the base. So again, same thing with spawn rates, as I said before. When you're ready to harvest the mobs, just give them one punch. It is at the perfect height where you don't have to use any weapons, any swords. You can just use your hand. You're not losing durability. And as you can see, all of our loot was already getting collected into the farm. If you like this video, please let me know. If it was helpful, please let me know. If you have suggestions, please let me know. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy.